Howdy guys, this is Sid with Campo. I'm kind of having a moment because this is my personal rig. I bought this rig in college. I sold it when I got married because Allie and I, my wife, wanted to buy a Sprinter. And then we realized that we didn't like the Sprinter. So then we bought it back from the car collector that we sold it to. I'm kind of pumped to tell you about the mods, why we chose to keep this rig around. There's so many little things that are gonna be fun to share with you guys. Uh, do that again and don't hold your hands like a limp dinosaur. Thank you. <laughs> 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 First of all, take a look at this photo of my wife and I sitting in this rig on our wedding day. Pretty sweet. We fell in love in this thing. That's kind of how we like to say it. So when we sold it to a car collector who just collected Volkswagen Bannigans, we, uh, we were pretty heartbroken. We knew that we needed something more reliable. We were driving like thousands of miles for work at a time. My wife's a wedding photographer, so we were going all over the Western United States. That was kind of our, our original, like the Westies break down, we need reliability, we're getting a Sprinter. When I originally bought the rig, it had 138,000 miles on it. I bought it from the original owner, Super sweet couple. They actually cried while I was driving it away. Obviously there's an emotional connection which kind of ties everybody to Vanagon in some sense. It's always hard to leave. Even if the thing burnt up on the side of the road while you were driving it, it's, uh, it's never easy to say goodbye. So we didn't. We sold it to the, this car collector. We bought it back. Once we bought it back from him, we really started taking mods more seriously. I wanted to keep it all original. I didn't want to add big wheels, a lift kit, all this stuff, because I just liked the vibe of the original stock Vanagon. But then it became this kind of practical thing where bigger wheels and tires are actually safer. There's actually more traction. You actually need a full-size spare. You need a roof pod because you're trying to put all your camping gear in here and it just doesn't fit. So, tons of mods. First of all, this one will change the game. Subtle to some of you, not so subtle to others, this is cruise control. A lot of the rigs didn't come with cruise control. I actually added this one. Cruise control was an ad that we did last summer and that was absolutely essential because I actually, in the seated position in the van again, my foot, I, <laughs> see, I sound a little soft when I say this, you guys, but I, I started uh, getting a really tight hamstring to the point of where I couldn't like do hikes comfortably and stuff because my foot was always on the gas pedal. So we got cruise control so that I could like stretch out and put my leg off to one side. Sometimes I drive like this just to keep the style right. I've actually done this before when the road's kind of open. I don't know. You can kind of interpret your own, uh, your own path here, but ultimately cruise control on this rig lets you do your thing. Over here, I've got a hole that's waiting for another switch. I did this little mod in college expecting to put a light bar and spotties. I just went with the spotties here, you guys. So that's a uh, little LED spotties on the front. I put electrical tape over it because the light on there is way too bright when you're driving at night. The goal behind most of these mods was to try to bring the van up to Sprinter modern level without having to go with the Sprinter chassis. So we upgraded the stereo so we have nicer audio. We upgraded the speakers so you just get a better balanced sound system. We like listening to music while we drive so that was really important to us. The little creature comforts really mattered. So you know you're driving a classic car when uh, you can run the car without the key. I had that realization driving up Highway 1 and I just took it out and then I was staring at it and we were still driving down the road and then I was pumped because it was like, this thing is officially a classic now. It's kind of a funny story actually. Volkswagen, in all of their advertisements, showed four people dining in this rig comfortably. That's just not possible. I'll show you, but uh, you know, it was wishful thinking on their end. We got an extra 50 watt solar panel here that folds up, stows behind the seat, cutting boards. You think, oh, this thing's gonna swivel just, just great. I'm excited. Four of us, it's raining. We're all gonna be able to just, you know, hunky dory be in this thing and yeah. You sit here and your rib cage is just kind of jabbing into the steering wheel the whole time. Even if you have a newer model Vanagon, the steering wheel is a little smaller, but it still just gets in the way. It can't actually swivel all the way around. So the elephant in the room that feels like an elephant when you're in here is the fridge. A lot of people add an extra fridge in the Westies so they can ditch their normal fridge. We didn't do this for a long time because the normal fridge actually worked great. 
but this sucker's just got a lot more capacity. It's a lot more efficient when you run it off the batteries. You don't have to worry about propane and all that good stuff. These things are super durable. You can get them dirty, you can get them wet. This fridge is just gonna last you a lot longer than the normal Amazon brand. We don't feel weird about putting it out in the dirt or in the sand, and I've actually left the cord long enough so that we can do that when we're camping at a spot. We can just pull this thing out, have all the living room in here. We've kept the galley pretty stock. This is actually the main reason why we came back to the Westphalia, because this galley setup is just so perfect. The height of everything, the layout, the double burner cooktop, the sink. It's the perfect size for two cast irons. It's got your silverware drawer. We've got all of our pots and <laughs> pans and cups that fall around. And we like putting these things in between everything. Uh, they're little traction pads that you can buy on Amazon, but they just help things not rattle and they don't slide around on washboards. And this is where the factory fridge normally goes. However, we've got a toilet in there now, and then we also have another shelf on top. We usually put our toiletries and stuff in there. This had so much storage when you ditch the stock fridge. I love this bamboo table. I modeled it after the same table that came with it. I just used this, the old table as a template, and I made this out of three quarter inch bamboo. I put a nice quarter inch round over on it. it just adds a fun little warm pop to the rig. We mounted a fan here because we both love gray noise while we sleep, but these Sirocco's are just stellar. You can point them in any direction. I can blow all the cooking stuff out the window if I want to. It's a super nice fan to have and it consumes almost no electricity. So it's, uh, it's just like kind of a no brainer. Under the seat, I've got a West Marine 100 amp hour battery. I've got a Blue Sea ACR. This is a battery isolator. So that when the car's running, I can charge this battery off the alternator, but then it separates itself. I also have a little shore power plug that I wired in with a little $20 Amazon trickle charger. I used a really cheap battery isolator at one point and we were driving through Montana and all of a sudden I was looking at my battery voltage and it was, it was just plummeting. And then I started smelling this like burning smell. I lifted the seat of the bench up and the whole thing was like just crazy hot and I got hit with like this oven. It was like boiling hot in here. And this thing, I swear the components inside were red hot, but they almost ignited this plywood. The finish on the plywood actually started to melt and bubble a little bit. Kind of scary. Don't use a cheap isolator. Uh, go for something a little nicer. This is a smart charger, so it actually will cut the batteries off when they don't need to be charged. Last year, we installed the Webasto Airtop 2000 STC with zero regrets. This thing keeps it 70 degrees in here, no matter the conditions outside. We've camped when it's freezing outside, below freezing, with the top up, with friends sleeping up here, and all of us were super comfortable. It was 70. Underneath the table, there's two storage compartments. Everybody knows what these are, but we've got some snacks in here and we've got the water tank access in here. This storage is actually crazy deep and this one's fairly deep. You can pack so much food in here. You can go off grid for at least a week, no problem. And then the water tank's 15 gallons. So, you know, if you're just using it for drinking water and occasional dishes, you can go a long time. There's a full size closet, which is a little bit of a waste of space. It was nice to have, definitely not necessary. Kind of wish it wasn't here so that we could have more bed space. I don't think there's a better bed setup than the Westphalia folding bed. You ready for this? It's crazy. Done. So the bed is a little bit bigger than a twin. It's closer to a full, but it's not quite as long. So it's tight, but it's also cozy. Kind of depends on how you look at it. You gotta have the right perspective. You guys, you can sleep four people in this thing, which a lot of people know, some people don't. Kind of blows me away, but I'm gonna go up here, take a nap. You gotta do a couple things first. These hinges always just rattle like crazy when you're on the road, so I stuff some paper towels in there and it solves that problem. Oh. This bed up here is actually bigger than the one downstairs, so some people end up using this as their primary bed so that they can leave the bench downstairs. Unfortunately, this is a two inch pad where downstairs is four. This ends up being a little bit less comfortable than downstairs, but still, there's just tons of room up here. It's pretty nice to be able to have sleeping for four in such a small van. I threw a 30 watt solar panel on the roof more to be a trickle charger than to really keep the batteries fully up and alive when the fridge was plugged in. 
The fridge actually draws more power than the solar panel can put into the batteries, which is why we also carry around a 50 watt auxiliary solar panel that we can throw on the windshield when we're actually camping. I replaced the original pop top because it didn't have side windows and we wanted side windows. So this is a Go Westy cotton pop top. I also added the Go Westy struts to it. So it can help assist up to, I think 150 pounds of weight which is about when surfboards are packed on and everything, what we have on the roof. This swing away was an absolute beast. I stole it from a Nissan Pathfinder. I think it was a 1984 Pathfinder. I had to bend it, I had to mod it. I didn't steal it, I got it from a pick and pull for 25 bucks. But it cost me a hundred bucks to get my spare tire. It's a full size spare, it's a BFG. 215.70 R16 and two Jerry's for 10 gallons of extra fuel. It's a super bomber mounting setup. Also just the most satisfying closing click in the world. There's a ton of great auxiliary window options for Westphalia's. Personally, I didn't have the budget to spend on like a thousand dollar one. Again, Vanigan Life makes a stellar one that I absolutely love, but I had to come up with something different. I ordered an aluminum window replacement. I think I got it off Bus Depot or Van Cafe. And then I spray painted it white and I through bolted L-Track to it. I made this window that's super low profile when you take everything off, but it's also really nice to have a high lift jack and a shovel right on the side here. Cause I end up using a high lift a lot. This thing's two wheel drive, it's not four. So it comes in handy more often than you'd think. It also doubles as a ladder, which is really nice. I mean, this thing is, it's just, it's crazy bomber. Up top, I've got Thule crossbars, just two of them with the Thule Mountaineer pod. It's really nice to have a slim pod so that you can still fit full longboard surfboards and traction boards. And then I can also get some fishing poles up here too. The stock Vanagon mirrors are absolute crap. They are floppy, they get dirty, they're just miserable. That You can't see anything out of them. So these truck mirrors are great. You can get them on Go Westy or whatever. They're a little expensive, but they've saved me multiple times in LA traffic. And need I say more? I put an inch and a half lift on here from Go Westy. They sell some really sweet springs. They set the whole stance a little bit higher. It makes for the same amount of travel, but more off-road ability. Inevitably, Westphalias are gonna be heavier on the left and on the right, because you've got a water tank over there. You've got your galley cabinet over there. You've got a bunch of stuff over there that's weighing it down. I had to trim out the driver's side spring about an inch to fully space everything out so it's sat level. Pretty wild, but also cool that they sell spacers so that you can do that and make sure that it's riding totally straight. So the front of the rig, we've got this bull bar that's really just for show, you guys. I don't think that would stop a deer, but I got some, uh, I got it for free, so I put it on. I found the antler while I was hiking. I believe it's from an elk. Uh, I guess it's cool. I just threw it on there because it fit. There is something different about the Vanigans, about Westphalia's, just Vanigans, old Volkswagens in general that can't be replicated with a modern Sprinter. Even if you're getting an older Sprinter, you just still don't get the same thing. And that thing is, and it is untangible, but it's the vibe. You will not experience driving next to the Pacific Ocean on a windy, beautiful road the same way in this car that you would in a Sprinter. A Sprinter, you're gonna be, you know, your AC is blowing, you're just kind of in your zone, you're doing your thing. Another Sprinter passes by and you're like, sick rig, yeah, nice, all right, cool, yeah, sweet, yeah, cool. But in the Westphalia, you're fighting the wind, you're constantly engaged, you've got Mac DeMarco playing on the stereo, you're in the zone, you're vibed out, you got your shades, you got your marine radio telling you what the weather's doing, and then a Westie passes you or any other old Volkswagen, and they give you a huge shaka, you give them a piece, you honk, you flash your brights. That can't be recreated. That's why you get a Westphalia. That's why we came back to this. I know these rigs are just, they're known for their unreliability. They're known for breaking down. They're known for being expensive. And it is, it is true. They break down a lot. They are expensive, but that's also part of it. You never really know if you're gonna make it there or not, but when you do, it's like this just mind blowing experience. You're just so juiced that you actually made it to the camp spot in one piece. So for us, again, it could be totally different for you, but for us, we just love the Westphalia platform. We love the layout. We love the vibe. We love the culture. We love the people that are involved with these Westies. That's why we kept end up coming back to this rig because we just wanted those fun vibes, that just adventure making machine that this thing is. It's been an honor to share our personal rig with you. I think it's, uh, I don't know, I'm pinching myself. This is fun.
I hope you guys enjoyed seeing it. I hope you get some inspiration and uh, let me know if you have any questions. Happy to answer them in the comments below. Cheers.